The hour being now seven o'clock, we'll call this meeting to order. And if the city council members will lead us in the flag, the pl pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just by way of information, I am not Pete Rust. I'm Gary Kelpak, the council uh, president. And so I'll be conducting this meeting tonight and we'd like to excuse the mayor. He's home recovering from a rotator cuff uh, operation and he's doing quite well. So we'd like to excuse him. And so the next item on the agenda is Approval of the agenda, and is there a motion? I make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. Motion was made by Mike, uh, Councilman Shutron, and second by Robert Berg. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes unanimously. The next item on the agenda is proclamations. And the first proclamation that will be on the agenda tonight is the Diabetes Awareness Month. And I will read the proclamation. And then when I'm uh, finished with reading the proclamation, is there anyone in the audience that wants to say anything about this proclamation? If not, all those that are here, that are here for the proclamation, if they'd please come forward after I read it, and we will give you the proclamation and take a picture. So, Diabetes Awareness Month proclamation. Whereas 34.2 million adults and children in the United States have diabetes, and another 88 million individuals have prediabetes and are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. And whereas by making healthy lifestyle choices, it is possible to manage or reverse prediabetes and prevent it from turning into two, type two diabetes. And whereas diabetes is a chronic long lasting disease that affects how your body turns food into energy. There are three main types of diabetes, type one, type two, and gestational diabetes, diabetes while pregnant. And whereas diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and may be underreported, medical costs and lost work and wages for people with diagnosed diabetes total $327 billion yearly. And whereas uncontrolled diabetes puts people at risk for serious medical complications, including cardiovascular disease, blindness, kidney disease, and dialysis, nerve damage, and amputation. And whereas diabetes screening for at-risk group and self-management education are a cornerstone of treatment, and whereas Diabetes Awareness Month is an opportunity for Green River citizens to unite, to unite to increase individual and community awareness, change lives, and stop the diabetes epidemic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Pete Rust of Green River, Wyoming, hereby proclaims November the 20, November 2021 as Diabetes Awareness Month and encourages citizens of Green River to join in supporting individuals and families in our community affected by this serious medical condition. 
So those that are here tonight, if they would come forward, I think Rob Fisher and Lena Mazur and Dakota Hunter and Scotland Smart, would they please all come forward? <clears throat> Doctor, but speaking of the four kids, so Scotland, Dakota, Lena, and John, and a handful of high blood diabetics, I just would like to add some information to the beginning. Unpreventable and no amount of diet or anything else to do with nutrition. And Stefan is a pre diabetic, but him being pre diabetic also means that he, there's nothing, there's no diet or anything that he can do. And um, the beginning of the proclamation was a little bit like two, I think, maybe. But thank you very much. And so, The next, the next item on the agenda is the <clears throat> proclamation for um, Extra Mile Day proclamation. And I'll go ahead and read that one. Extra Mile Day proclamation. Whereas Green River, Wyoming is a community which acknowledges that a special vibrancy exists within the entire community when, it, when its individual citizens collectively go the extra mile in personal efforts, volunteerism, and service. And whereas Green River, Wyoming is a community which encourages its citizens to maximize their personal contributions to the community by giving of themselves wholeheartedly and with total effort, commitment, and conviction to their individual ambitions, families, friends, and community. And whereas Green River, Wyoming is a community which chooses to shine a light on and shine a light on and celebrate individuals and organizations within the community who go the extra mile in order to make a difference and lift up fellow members of their communities. And whereas Green River, Wyoming acknowledges the mission of Extra Miles American to create 550 extra mile cities and is proud to is proud to support Extra Mile Day on November the 1st, 2021. Now therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Pete Rust of Green River, Wyoming hereby proclaims November 1st, 2021 to be Extra Mile Day. I urge each individual in the community to take time on this day to not only go the extra mile in his or her own life, but to also acknowledge, but also acknowledge all those who are inspirational in their efforts and commitment to make their organization, family, community, country, our world a better place.
Is there anyone here uh, to receive the proclamation for the extra mile day? Does, does any of the council have anything to comment in regards to the diabetes and the extra mile proclamation? Is there any comments? Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna move on now to uh, presentations. <clears throat> and tonight, we're really in for a treat. And most of us are aware of the treat that we're going to get, but tonight is a special night for the City Council, and it's going to be a real treat for us to recognize Brittany Montgomery. As Teacher of the Year in the state of Wyoming, 2022, and Brittany you make us proud and we're so grateful that you're teaching in our school system and i have to say that green river school system is second to none it's the best in the state so would you uh, go to the stand and make some comments and tell us how neat this is it would help if i turned it on yeah um, it's, it's very exciting. Um, you know, it's nice to be recognized, but I think it's really nice that our district and our town is being recognized, um, for its excellence. Um, it's going to provide lots of opportunities and, um, I'm just, I'm really excited. So it's, well, it's going to be good. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad that you're in Green River Wild. Yeah. We're thankful for that. Yes. Does it, anybody on the council have anything to say or any comments to make? Thanks for all the added effort you had to put in to actually receive the award. I mean, it's pretty, it's a great thing that you're definitely teaching here in Green River. Yeah, that's a great district. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm excited to represent our town and the state of Wyoming. So we now we go into um, becoming, finding out who's the national teacher of the year. So well, good luck. Yeah. That'd so yeah, it's very know. exciting. <laughs> I think Green River has had somebody win the national one before, haven't they? Not to my knowledge. Not, well, you're going to be the first. Oh, one. well, <laughs> that would be a huge honor. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for the recognition. I think it's, I think it's neat that the press that's been happening all over the nation negatively towards teachers and school districts and stuff like that. This is just so good. It's exciting. So yeah. thank you so much well, for like you. Mike said, all the hard work. And <laughs> we're excited that it's right here in little old Green I River. Oh, it's very exciting. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. of course. Thank you for putting us on the map. <laughs> well, we there are many before we, me. Yeah, we have this plaque we'd like to give you. Oh, everyone. perfect. Oh, Wait. There's one other. I'm sorry. Yeah, I oh. have to say something. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I, I personally want to thank you from last year of doing all the reading that you did with the children. I think yeah. I, you know, in between my meetings at home, I'd click on and there you are. I'm like, oh, she put a smile on my face. Oh. I'm like, all the children, you probably put a smile on their face too. Oh, but thank you for having yes. a passion and caring for our children. Absolutely. Here. So thank you, Brittany. Yes, of course. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. I know, right? <laughs> Who's this, Brittany? Brittany, who is this? Which, what's this? This is Noah. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and Nick. Nichols. Hi, oh. Noah, you're looking at me? <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. Thank Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, you guys. The next item on the agenda is the Greenbelt Task Force update by John Freeman. But before you come up, John, we would like to go ahead and just take a two minute break or a 30 second break. And for those that don't want to stay for the rest of the meeting, you're welcome to leave.
Okay, John. And and the reason that we let them go early, we expect you to stay the whole meeting, John. And <laughs> Thank you. In a little while. Been on the uh, website for probably a month now. It's been heavily advertised. But uh, when I uh, sometimes I like to have it in front of me when somebody goes over it, so we'll give it to you. And here, you got fresh money. You can look at. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Um, and. Uh, when I came here about four or five months ago, uh, I said that I keep you in, uh, uh, informed of what's going on, and uh, um, and we we got a lot of information from the survey. Um, a lot. One of the things that uh, when I heard of surveys in my public service, everybody got excited when they had two to three hundred uh, respondents. We had over seven hundred and sixty respondents. We, um, we went all out. We um, uh, want to thank the chamber because they put it out on all of their, um, their emails and their publications. Want to thank the city for doing that. There are several major um, employers that, that did that. The school district did um, both to, for, their, um, for their employees and for their, for their students. And we had several nonprofits that also put it out to their members. Um, I think one of the things I'm excited about the 760, and I think it's 768. I'm never good at numbers. I'm a social studies teacher, so it's uh, that's what the math people do. Um, but, um, you know, we had it way out there. And if somebody didn't like the green belt, they had more than more than ample opportunity to, to use that that. Uh, um, that mechanism to uh, speak against it, and yet 96% of the people uh, were very favorable of the of the green belt and and what was going on. And the people that uh, were we wouldn't classify as favorable, um, they just said they didn't use it, and, uh, and that's perfectly under understandable. Um, uh, the big thing is is 96 of the respondents use the green belt. If you look on uh, page two, you see how um, it all divided out. Um, and they have for a long time. I think 50% uh, of the people said they've been using it for 10 years or so. And um, I think that that shows you um, how much it's built into the culture of the city. Um, they um, say that access is easy. Uh, they come to the car or come to the green belt on their, um, in their car and then go to common access points, the most popular is the island, and you can see where the other uh, people that are coming to that um, have um, said, and that's on the front page. And I just panicked. I realized that my loose leaf thing might not be the same as what you guys got stapled together, but you can find it. Um, the respondents valued the green belt. 97% of the respondents said it's a great recreation value and provides health and exercise options. Uh, as a pre-diabetic and a person who's been in the school system, they were always looking for some places to go um, and um, exercise. And the green belt is is definitely a place to go there. As makes ninety four percent says it makes the city more attractive and a um, a place to live and stay. Ninety three percent says it gives access to nature, and um, ninety three percent of it. Uh, the respondent says it improves their quality of life. That last uh, category um, makes me very happy because when we first started writing grants, we kept on saying this will improve the quality of life for the citizens of Green River. And here we are 30 years later and 90, 93% say that, that that's the, that's the case. 29% um, of the respondents say they use it every day. And, um, and I think that's huge. The most common usage is walking. Uh, and following walking, there's wildlife observation, biking. This is on page two, jogging, 
floating and fishing, although I don't think I would want to float it uh, tonight. It's going to be cold. Um, most of the other respondents used it for the for the three warmer seasons, but I think it's significant that thirty one percent of the of the people still use it in the winter. And um, Brad has told me that uh, he's gotten phone calls that says we need to 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 clear the 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 green belt because people were using it to get to work. So we're starting to act like a big city, I think, in, in that response. Um, this, the next one on page five is the green belt of enhancements. We're putting together a, a master plan. And the reason why we're putting together a master plan is um, we want to enhance what the river's doing. And we were looking at where, uh, where people would like to see uh, improvements. The, the highest thing on there, if you put the top two uh, respondents on there, something says this is essential, this would be really nice. 87% says erosion control. And when I first saw that, I kind of went, what, you know, people, in the bottom line is people's looking what's happening to the, to the bank of the river. Uh, I think I've said in this, um, in front of this body before, but one of the first thing we did is we put a, a gravel uh, trail in Scott's bottom area, right to, by the bridge, by the, um, um, in that parking lot, and it would go to the Scott's bottom nature area. We put the, the trail was 10 foot wide and the trail was 15 feet away from the edge of the river. If you go down there today, the 15 feet is gone, and in most places, so is the 10 feet of, of trail. And they've seen the erosion of the river. And if you look um, uh, south on, on that portion of the thing, you'll see three big islands that weren't there 30 years ago when I was doing that. They were sandbars. And um, so it makes sense. Um, and people that go down there every day uh, see that. 85% of the people said that, boy, it'd sure be nice if we could use this at twilight or dark or something like that. They would like to extend the use of it by uh, having lighting. 84% uh, um, um, would like to see trailhead movement uh, improvements. If you look down at the last of that bulleted point list, 82% um, uh, of the people say that they would have, they would like to see more ADA um, access to that. And um, Bill Lewis is with us tonight. He serves on our board. And he's uh, been working diligently to, to put another ramp on um, the trail to where we have another ADA accessive, accessible uh, place for people to get on there with their wheelchairs or their walkers or whatever, those kind of things. Um, people go to the bathroom and they want some shade trees and they would really like to have something to shelter them from the wind, although I don't think that happens too much in Wyoming. Uh, water fill stations. Um, we, we put just kind of a, a, a trail run and, uh, you know, say, you know, where should funding for these enhancements come? And what I, what I don't think that uh, most people in Green River realize that uh, most of the trails and the major projects that have happened along the, the Greenbelt have come from um, grants, um, um, private donations, and, um, and uh, so when you're talking about 75 to 80 percent of that's coming not from the general fund of the city, I think that that's, that's a, a huge testament to what um, uh, the Greenbelt Task Force has done and, and what your, uh, your uh, um, gold, National Gold Medal Award winner in recreation management has done. They've, they've gone up there. We have to maintain it, but one of the things that uh, we've always said in the, in the Green Belt is, is that we, want, we, don't have, we don't want a high maintenance Green Belt. If you go to places like Boise, um, they have uh, Kentucky bluegrass everywhere. They have sprinklers. They have all that other kind of stuff. We're, we're kind of keeping it um, natural. Um, the other thing that um, is important is 80% uh, of uh, the respondents thought that uh, uh, six penny funds uh, towards the Greenbelt would be a good idea. 
um, from what I know, and I've been doing this for a long time, is is um, sales tax or some sort of things like the six penny is what uh, really helps cities get going on on there. I think that most of the the pathway system in Casper was built with six penny um, funding. So you have eighty percent of the of the people that um, um, were looking at that. Uh, we had. People from we we uh, and I don't believe it's in in the packets you have. This packet was put together by the National Park Service um, for us. We've been partnering with them to, and they're helping us uh, put together that. But um, um, we've had people from all over the the area that have. Uh, um, uh, responded to this. The vast majority are people from Green River, but there are other people that, you know, I when I was working in Rock Springs, I had people that would come over usually on a weekly basis, two or three times a month. Um, somewhere in that neighborhood would come and use a green belt. They wanted to be along the river. They wanted to see the wildlife and, and go from there. Um, what's the next steps that we're doing? Uh, right now, we're organizing working groups. We're going to take these um the survey results uh we've got people that uh have ideas of how to enhance the uh um the green belt experience and uh we're going to add it to the to the green belt uh master plan that we put to, in place 30 years ago um it needs updated but i think that it's still relevant um and then the second thing is is we're building up the green belt task force itself um, Bill and I are new members. We we came on at the the beginning of the year, and we're recruiting other members. The other nice thing about the survey is is we had over 170 people say that they would help, and we're going to have to organize to where that we can get them to be part of part of the. Um, um, I, I hate to say solution because we got a pretty good thing going already, but uh, uh, to to get things better, I um, purposely kept this short. I thought that you guys would want to do one of two things: you want to leave early, like the crowd that you 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 ushered out before I began to speak, or you have leftover candy uh, at home and uh, you want to get back to that before your spouse is kind of take that all over. So, um, questions. Anybody have any questions or comments for the Green Belt? No questions, but I appreciate what you're doing to spearhead all of this. I know there's a lot of work that goes into it, and I look forward to seeing what comes out of it. Me too. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? I just have a couple things to say, and that is uh, on your item six, item 11, since I use the Green Belt a lot, I was interested to know that uh, pathway lighting, 46% was a high priority. And I think that's a good thing for us as the city to pay attention to. I've had a number of people comment to me since I use the green belt all the time that they think there's some areas that are unsafe. And so if you can push uh, our city staff to try and dig up some money someplace to, to help with that. That would be a real benefit. And then the other thing I noticed on here was uh, on the item 13, where it says great rec recreational assets, 78% of them said it, they strongly agree. And I, I do think that there's a large number of people in our uh, community that does use the green belt, uh, as you said before, more than once. And there's one thing that I don't think has ever been said. And I, I, if I'm right on this, Brad, you might correct me on this, but there's some areas on the green belt that have, the, the banks have been fixed and repaired by anonymous donations. Yes. And whom, whomever has done that, that person or persons need to be thanked. And, and we appreciate that very much for what they've done. I don't have any other comments, no other comments. I, I think you're spot on. And, um, you know, um, we would like to see more people 
Well, when I stood at this podium 30 years ago, it was a like city council member sitting where George was It said that only 15 people would ever use it. And um, you've heard this story. My wife doesn't go on the green belt with me because I will count the first 15 people and say we're all here. And um, <laughs> it doesn't take long on most days. So, um, but I think the big thing is, is, and I've said this before, is that the, the Greenbelt Task Force and the city has probably one of the best relationships in the city or in the in the state. And um, what we really want to do when we talk about next step, next steps, and um, um, is reinforce the the task force itself. We've never uh, really went out to look for memberships. We just had a board of directors, but. Uh, we have uh, we've had a request last month to say you know could you come up with fifteen hundred dollars to help with engineering for a project that we have underway and um, we couldn't commit fifteen percent of our uh, our uh, resources not knowing where we're going to go with this uh, this um, with this uh, master plan. The other thing is is if you think about how low the water was. Um, this summer, wouldn't it have been nice if we had $40,000 to where that we could um, buy um, granite rocks and put into the river and um, with with little cost to put it in the river uh, to fish fisheries. Before Fontenel Dam busted loose the last time, um, it was a blue ribbon trout stream through the city of Green River. And it's always been kind of a goal to, to bring that up to that, that point again. Wouldn't it be nice to have a, a Gold River, or a, a Blue Ribbon um, River next to a Blue Ribbon Reservoir. So, and um, the other thing that I've had a lot of people, and we haven't, um, I didn't talk about it, but um, uh, I got a, a couple page um, email this morning. Uh, from a guy that says, you know, we have to talk about the economic development opportunities that Greenbelt has. And if you go into a place like Boise or San Antonio or or some of these other places, uh, um, I was watching a football game a couple of weeks ago and they were talking about the the um, the trails that are around uh, Heinz Field in, in Pittsburgh, you know, that flocks, you know, people flock to that. And tomorrow I'm on my way on a 13 mile or 13 hour journey to, to my uncle's funeral and I'll be looking for a place that has um, has pathways because uh, when I sit that long my butt becomes numb and so does my legs and I have to I have to do something and people do that and I know that people stopping in Greenver just for that reason so but thank you for your cooperation thank you for your support and uh, um, We'll be back. John, thank you. Thanks, John. And, and pass it on to your uh, uh, board members. Tell them thank you for the work they do. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We will take a little break if you two would like to leave, but we'd, we prefer you stay in because the next part is really important. The next item on the agenda is citizens request. And I don't see any citizens in the audience that have anything to say. So we'll just skip that and move on to resolutions. Item A, consider of a resolution accepting grant funds from the Wyoming Office of Homeland Security. Chris, you wanna explain that to us? I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> Mayor and Council, good evening tonight. Uh, before you is a resolution, There's this is a two-part deal, so you'll see an action item a little later in there. Or, no, I take that back. We already No, there is an action item later. Um, so it's a two-part deal. So if you remember right, I want to say it was a little over six months ago, we approached the council about applying for some Homeland Security funds for cybersecurity and that. Uh, at the speed of government, we've finally been awarded that. And so the we'll start dotting the I's and crossing the signatures to get all that awarded if that's the council's wish tonight. 
what we'll use those funds for is to beef up our firewall or replace our current firewall and beef up our course, which is what you're not too far out of the end of the life. Those are our two main lifebloods in, in our in our network system. Um, one keeps stuff out, the other one keeps everything running. So we felt that was a really good need for the these cybersecurity funds. Um, they'll tremendously help us. With that comes a plethora of interesting reports that we'll send you guys if you really want to read them, the Homeland Security requests. Um, and we'll go from there. But in, in general, this will help us. Uh, the course, which is a project we've had to fund for the city council for the last several years. And uh, you can never, never beef your firewall up too much. So these funds will definitely help us for that. Does anyone have any questions of, of Chris? Thank you, Chris. Moving on, is there a, a motion? Councilman Shetron. I move to approve the budget resolution, increasing the general fund in the Information Technology Division in the amount of $30,339.05 to be used to replace, up, replace or update the city's firewall and network switches. Second. <clears throat> Motion made by Councilman Shetron and seconded by Councilman Zimmerman. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed by the same? Motion passes unanimously. The next item on the agenda is council action items. And item A is consideration to release the retainage for the 2021 Cape Cap Cape, Cape Seal. Seal project. Um, council, members of the council, Mr. Chairman, um, Mark Westensco, Public Works Director. This is one of the re retainage releases that we bring it to, to you at the end of every capital project. This summer, we were able to do um, close to six miles of Cape Seal uh, on some of our city streets, and uh, the project turned out pretty well. We're excited to watch that and see how that wears um, and see what kind of life that'll give us. Um, but uh, the retainage is, is uh, the project is complete. It has been advertised. We have not yet received any um, claims against the project still waiting for a little bit of paperwork so we won't give them the check yet but this is your opportunity to to do your part so does anyone on the council have any questions for mark councilman zimmerman mark do you recall how many miles we did it's just under six miles that's my thought thank you <clears throat> councilman jose do you have something yeah, I was just gonna say, I think that job really turned out nice. And, you know, I've been on all the streets, I believe, and they have really come out good, I think. Yeah, we, it's, yeah. A, it's a two-step process um, with the, the, the uh, chip seal that actually uh, uses special application of the oil to get it down deep into the cracks um, with a chip seal and then with a slurry seal on top of it. And it's, uh, they're, they're seeing good success in other areas with, uh, treatment that kind of a treatment on on um i don't want to say marginal roads roads that are still in decent shape that have some life left in sure. but uh it, it's not something that you can necessarily apply to to some of our our, our dirty dozen but uh it, it's something that we we hope to keep these roads off that list for a few more years so yeah get more life out of them yep. yeah it's too bad though i thought that about the uh, Two days after it was finished, somebody was digging up in Medicine Bow Street or that one up there. I know the guy needed access to a sewer line, but just seemed like, oh, that's terrible timing. We, we had quite a conversation with them. <laughs> I bet. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Thank you, Mark. Is there a motion? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Jost. I move we release the retainage to the Advanced Paving and Construction LLC for the Cape Seal project, in the amount of $34,884.34. We have a second. I'll second. <clears throat> Motion was made by uh, Councilman Jost and seconded by Councilperson Bushman. Do we have any discussion? Does anybody have any discussion on this item? All those in favor say aye. 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 
and those opposed by the same. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is item B, consideration to approve the FY21 State Homeland Security Program Grant Agreement with the Wyoming Office of Homeland Security. Chris? Mr. President, I know you've been waiting for me to call you that all night <laughs> since I forgot earlier. Uh, yes, this is a companion you agreement. To to this. <laughs> <laughs> you really want it on record that I called you Mr. President, don't you? <laughs> Council President, yes. Um, yeah, this is a companion agreement to the resolution the council just passed a few minutes ago. It's for the exact same thing. I believe it's up 21 pages of very interesting reading. I'm assuming no one has any questions or comments. Thank you, Chris. Do we have a motion? Council President. Councilman Berg. Move to approve the fiscal year 21 state Homeland Security program grant agreement with the Wyoming Office of Homeland Security. Is there a second? Second. But the motion was made by Councilman Berg and seconded by Councilman Shutron. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those that may oppose by the same. Motion passes unanimously. I think we're gonna beat Mayor Russ's record tonight. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Is Second. there a, a motion was made by Councilman Shetron and seconded by Councilman Berg. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those that oppose? Passes unanimously. <clears throat> So now we move on to the uh, city administrator's report. Thank you, council president. <laughs> um, just a couple of quick things, um, just going off of the um, discussion from John Freeman and the grant side or on the uh, Greenbelt Task Force and some of the comments you had discussed as well regarding the lights. We did get, um, we'll be presenting to you the um, going through an acceptance and that side, but we did get confirmed on the grant that we had put in for. That grant is a $400,000 grant for with a $100,000 match, so $500,000. We already had the LCWF grant that was out there as well, which was a 50-50 grant for 125 and 125 that um, we're going to have to do an extension on only because of the COVID and what it hit. But that um, is going to do for the... Um, uh, replace and down in the, the, the river park down there. Uh, we'll be replacing the pathway. There is some lighting that will be in that. I think that'll be a great start to that project. And there's some riverbank um, work that will be done and um, the sidewalk replacement and that kind of thing. So we're trying to ma match those two up. And we have a couple of other uh, um, grants as well as some work that we're looking to do to try to complement that. And I think that would be a really big boost to that area. So we're excited about that. The, the staff and Brad and their group and Ryan, his group has done a really good job in getting that stuff going forward. So looking forward to that. Um, <clears throat> also, I just want to, the work that was being done out on near the diversion dam with the, on the intake side for the um, Kildare wetlands, Rocky Mountain Power has been donating their equipment and time to help us get that done. It's um, but re reestablishing that bank work, it's got a, it still has a long ways to go. They got a few more weeks to do, but if you see some work out there, that is what that is being done. And then we're still moving forward with some of the um, looking to get some funds for the diversion dam itself inside. So we've uh, uh, trying to think what we else have. Oh, and regarding the uh, IT security. Um, that is, if, if you're keeping up on some of the municipalities and even within the states, let alone hospitals and that kind of stuff, but that cybersecurity is such a big issue right now. Um, you know, I think that the limited resources that we have, they've been doing a really good job. We've really focused on that, that part of it. Um, we need to continue to update that. We're working on you know, additional personnel on that side as well. 
with our network um, will be, that's in one of those areas that's just going to keep costing us more, um, but it's so, so needed, you know, and hopefully we don't have to get into um, getting, you know, through the attacks and stuff on that side, but they, they do a really good job with what we have on that side. So we're, we're glad that, that we were able to get that grant. And the last thing that uh, also was just a, a real quick update on the wastewater treatment plant. As you know, we the bids had come in. Um, we'd sent note to let you know that those bids were way higher than what we had looked had looked had anticipated when we first did the engineer drawings. Um, almost a fifty percent increase um, with the COVID and supply chain issues and uh, cost, labor, the whole thing. Um, we have talked to the state. Uh, Mark has been doing a lot of a lot of calls on that side of it. Um, we are looking. Um, we're putting together a letter. We got verbal confirmation that they will be able to help us out regarding the original loans that we had done, which is for the design engineering as well as the original construction loan that we had. Um, that savings alone, even though we had a really good rate, but the, what they're going to help us with on there will save a lot of interest dollars that will help limit some of that impact. We're still um, working with the state at a couple of different levels on, you know, if there are some ARPA funds and what might be, but that's not going to be till March until we have some kind of idea on that. Um, Ryan and Mark are doing a, a lot of work in getting that that stuff taken care of, but um, we'll be coming back and probably doing some kind of workshop to show you where we're at on there. But just so you know that 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 is in the process. Um, I've been sharing that. Uh, we'll start sharing some of that here more as we get more into the details. So that's all I have. Thank you. Our city attorney to report. I have no report tonight, Mr. President. You know, I uh, I talked to our attorney before the meeting, told him to keep track of me and make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And I know I did, and he didn't correct me. So <laughs> we'd like to now have our council reports, and we'll start with Councilman Zimmerman, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to put a plug in for No Shave November. All of us that want to join Reed and I and Mike <laughs> in that in that event, we would like to draw awareness, especially to uh, prostate cancer and testicular cancer. I'm sure there's some people out there that have have known some people that have gone through that, and uh, so we'd like to bring awareness to that by putting our shavers away for a month. What do you say, Steve? I'm in. All right, I thought you might be in. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to. Report. Thank you, Councilman Thanks. Zimmerman. Councilman Burke. I have no report tonight. Councilman Shetron. I'd just like to give a shout out to Ryan and Chris, uh, who all is working on these grants to actually bring in these extra dollars to the city coffers. I mean, it just makes the tax dollars go a lot further. And the fact that we're thinking outside the box and reaching for these funds right here it really means a lot. So thanks for all the work you guys do. That's all I have. Okay, Councilman, Council Person Bushman. See, there's the mistake right there. Come on. No kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, thank you, Mr. President. See, and he didn't even correct me. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so I just wanted to, I was going to echo what Mike was saying about the grants. I was thinking about that earlier. You know, a few years ago, we didn't, we were struggling trying to find someone to do grant writing. And here we are today. I can imagine it's probably past a million dollars that we've received in grants in the last couple of years, right? Right? Yeah. So that's just amazing work. It really is. And thank you for that. Um, I just want to also say that I've attended to the uh, Wild Stage Market and the Tomahawk Tavern at the Ex Expedition Island, and uh, it was a very huge turnout. Um, I was very impressed with it. I bought so many things. <laughs> and I didn't know, but someone actually they do um home deliveries like your beef and chicken and yogurt and i'm like what i didn't know that so i have their flyer <laughs> and it's free um anyways um and then just a friendly reminder the veterans run is this weekend so if you haven't signed up please do if not just come and enjoy the festivities we do have pancake breakfast and um Larry, thank you for not giving me a heart attack earlier. So, the, you know, as you know, the fire department's going to be there for the presentation of their flag and the Boy Scouts are going to do color guard and Girl Scouts are going to escort the veterans. So it's going to be fun. So but that's all I have. Thank you. What? Yes, it will be. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Jost. Yeah. I was just going to say I attended the parade. My wife and I 
on Saturday morning, the Halloween parade. It was way fun. We had a very nice time down there. A lot of people were there and the weather was great. It was a lot of candy, a lot of kids in costumes. It was just a fun morning. We enjoyed that a lot. So thank everybody that worked on that. The police were there, firemen, the city um, parks guys and rec guy, or I mean, road guys were putting up barriers and stuff. So city put out quite a nice effort there also. So it was a well-run parade there down Flaming Gorgeway. So it was fun. So we had a nice time. Thank <laughs> so you. A lot of people did. <laughs> I just want to know, Councilman Jules, what was your costume? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I don't really have any comments other than to say, uh, read thanks, tell everybody in the city and your department heads, thanks for the good work that they do. Uh, you guys do a great job. And if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those, oh, is, is there, no. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.